Ashley and I hate this when we see people and it's like this manufactured yes. confidence. It's like, you're a bad bitch and yes. you don't have to deal with this. And it's like, no, I'm a sad bitch and I do have to deal with this. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm tired and I need more help than that. <laughs> back to another episode of Girls Gotta Eat. Episode 203, we're counting again. <laughs> uh, it's so cold. <laughs> the cold front. It is really bad. Yeah, it's really bad. I took an Uber over here today and it was like three blocks. Like Azul's zoomies are out of control because he just hasn't been to the park in so long. I know. I got into it's the so car cold. today and they pulled up where we were going. The driver looked at me like, are you sure? <laughs> I'm like a six minute walk over here. I know. Okay, this episode is brought to you by BetterHelp Therapy Online. For 10% off your first month, go to betterhelp.com slash GGE. Start living a better life today. So it is very easy to get caught up in what everyone else needs from you and never take a moment to think about what you need from yourself. But when we spend all of our time giving, it can leave us feeling stretched thin and burnt out. And therapy can give you the tools to find more balance in your life, which we could all use. Um, and you can keep supporting others while you support yourself at the same time. And therapy in general can help with so, so, so many things. Things, but it's helpful for learning positive coping skills, how to set boundary, empower yourself to be the best version of yourself for yourself and others. Um, if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. You'll just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Super simple. It's really worth a try, guys. To find more balance with BetterHelp, visit betterhelp.com slash GGE today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash GGE. Okay. Um, so as we always say, we were in Texas. I'm sure it was great. Thank you guys for coming out. Thank you guys. Um, thank you to all the cowboys that probably touched our boobies. And <laughs> okay. Uh, we'll talk about it next week. Yeah, we'll give we'll you a little recap. Week. I know that like one person literally doesn't care, but everybody else cares. <laughs> so um, we're going to get that out of the way. And then of course, we have tons of shows coming up um, at girlsgottypodcast.com. You guys can get tickets all over the country. Like Ashley and I mentioned, um, other than Toronto, this will be our last shows. Um, everything you see on the website say it through the summer so um we are taking june july and august off of touring to well, have a life toronto's coming soon just to, to hear us out it's coming and so tickets still left in kansas city pittsburgh detroit st louis and indianapolis again if you live near there come to those shows detroit don't let me down a lot of <laughs> tickets left the, it's the fillmore we love it it's going to be great if you came to detroit before it's going to be better <laughs> that show we promise don't just just trust us and all those other places more my omaha girls out <laughs> shouted out omaha last week they, this one girl was like i will literally walk around omaha handing out flyers if you guys will come here i was like bitch you're coming to kansas city just come to kansas Let's, city well, maybe we'll get a hotel block and we'll get like a discount like a wedding we'll do a party and um indianapolis all my indiana girls i went to indiana university so please come uh we can't wait to see you guys girls got podcast.com for all tickets yes yeah, so maybe a few tickets left in dc uh uh, probably just a handful maybe in like LA uh, not much left so you'll see go to the website see what's see what's available and we'll see you guys there um and then as you guys always know merch is a journey um this is going to be the final week for um pretty much all the merch on our website currently so everything is going to be on sale I think 20% or more off for the full week. But if you like any of the styles, they're all going away. So um, this is your last chance to get everything. And then we'll have all new stuff in a few weeks. And we'll address, we'll address the journey. Why. Yeah, we'll talk about the we'll journey. We'll share our truth. Whole yeah. episode. <laughs> Merch is a journey. <laughs> Just questions are number one episode. Like, is there episodes? Is there a podcast about merchandise? Like, I don't understand. <laughs> it's about business operations. I don't get it. We are going to do more career stuff this year. I waited actually out. Yeah. Um, but check that out, girlsgettypodcast.shop. Um, and when you are done purchasing tickets for our shows and our merch, um, we always like to give you guys um, references of other really great shows. We have a huge audience in Chicago, and one of our good friends, Chris Stefano, will be there March 12th at the Chicago Theater, our absolute favorite place. Um, so we can't recommend seeing him enough um we did his podcast this week and so I, I was just thinking of him top of mind yeah today we're recording on the day that it came out it's really fun we just talk about all kinds of stuff he has a podcast called Chrissy Chaos went all the way to Staten Island I drove us paid the toll <laughs> and um 
it was great. And we just, we noticed that he has a bunch of tour dates coming up. A lot of the, a lot of crossover with us. So Atlanta, I think, uh, is coming up on like February. His Atlanta show is the night of our DC show. Oh, yeah. He's going to do the tabernacle. We have, we just adore him and had so much fun with him. And we hadn't seen him since before COVID. And so we met his baby <laughs> and his baby mama. And it was great. So get tickets and especially those Chicago tickets because there's no better show than us, the Chicago theater. Nothing better. I'll never live up to in the again. tabernacle. So yeah, that's it, guys. Um, and any comedians we have on our show will always um, direct you towards there. Yes, their we have an incredible guest today. We just wrapped with her. Her name is Lane Moore. I am so excited about this episode. I think it's going to be a game changer. It's about being alone, <laughs> but that sounds so <laughs> dramatic and, and dark, but no, it's, it's wonderful. And she's so wonderful. And she's our new friend. We like left and we were like, do you want to be friends? Or, like she texted just, me and said she wants to be friends with us, but in a chill way. She texted you? She texted oh, because you guys there. had talked. She doesn't have my number. <laughs> yeah, that's why. No, no, no. It's not because she doesn't like Ashley, too. And she, it's funny because, like, I feel like Ashley and I meet people together, and then they only make plans with us together for the end of time. People, like, <laughs> don't ever text us separately. They're like, if you and Ashley are both in town, I'd love to hang. All You're of like, our friends are just friends, friends with us. Okay, I have I some updates it. and some things to share. Okay. okay, so last week we talked about I was trying to figure out if Azul and his spanish colored name family (laughs) azul verde rose and roja that was the group he came from when he was uh seized from an arrest and that's a street shelter that's a street name and i'll get to why i was why i found out but the shelter did name them that so that that wasn't their names they were like i said seized from an arrest and then they went into the shelter and that's what this i talked to the woman that did it Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you why. And I just wanted to share the story of what I did last Saturday was one of my favorite things that I've ever done. I took a trip down to South Carolina with a nonprofit organization called Pilots to the Rescue. And it's this guy named Michael Schneider. And he started this. He started as a nonprofit. Now it's his full time gig. But he has a small plane. It's like a six seater which I am, I grew up on small planes. My dad is a four seater. He's a Cessna and like, so I'm not scared of them or anything, but he uh, takes it down and he just rescues animals and brings them back up to New York, New Jersey. And they get homes here because so many of the shelters are overrun in the South and people up here want to adopt dogs. So we went down and I went down with the founder of Animal Lighthouse, which is the rescue Azul came from. Her name is Julie. We flew on there with him and got dogs and cats from the same shelter Azul came from. So it was just, I couldn't have been a more special time. And on the anniversary of the day Dewey died, like, I just can't even believe that I got asked to do this. I got asked to do this two days before Dr. Lisa texted me. And I think they had, they they bring influencers down um, to document the trip and promote the company and everything. And just like, you know, have a good time. And especially if you're an animal lover. And I guess it sounds to me like someone couldn't go last minute. And Lisa was like, asked me if I want to go. I'm like, yes, I will drop everything. I got up at 530 in the morning. I didn't get home until 630 at night. And it was such an incredible experience. I just couldn't believe it was like January 8th, the day the Dewey passed, getting dogs from the shelter Azul came from. I like couldn't believe it. I just, I wore my sweatshirt with a Dewey and Azul on it. I was just so corny. And we flew down there and we put in the back of this plane, 17 animals, (laughs) eight dogs, nine cats. And some of the dogs were not small. Like I'm not, they were big 40, 50 pound dogs. Like you don't have to tell me. I can't imagine I being on a plane that size with three animals. I couldn't That's crazy believe we shoved them all in there. Like, I was like, how is this going to work? Almost all in crates. The cats are just in these soft crates. We were just passing it back and forth. I was like, can you hold this cat? <laughs> like, it was so nuts. Like, there was two cats in one carrier, Ben and Jerry. They're a bonded <laughs> pair. They sat on my lap. I could feel them, like, on my lap the whole time. Like, I was like, Julie, can you hold this cat? Like, it was insane. <laughs> there was a Frenchie that wouldn't stop moving around. His crate was flipping. He was like just on like a suicide mission. Like uh-huh. we're like, okay, can you calm down? So I was like, can you hold this Frenchie? Like it was chaos. And we flew down there. So many people came. I mean, we, this is a small town, South Carolina. Like, I think this was really exciting for them to come. And they have a great shelter down there called St. Francis Animal Center. They all came and I like pulled this woman aside. I'm like, I got to talk to you about Azul. She's like, oh, we remember Azul. We'll never forget those teeth. And she was like, yes, we <laughs> we named them like the group. Like I named them like these colors. Cause we just got to have a theme to keep them together. And I just realized this, a listener DM'd me about this because she saw my story. I was highlighting some of the dogs. Two of the dogs that we picked up, one was named Chloe and one was named North. And it never hit me that they could have done a Kardashian's what? <laughs> like, is Courtney still at the shelter? Like, is Penelope at the shelter? <laughs> Mason, like Mason, <laughs> you think Rob's daughter got in there? Tristan, no, no like Kanye, just yay. Like I literally, what? 
in my head, I'm like, North. I thought of, literally thought of North, Kim's kid. And then a listener DM me, she was like, Chloe and North, is this the Kardashian theme? And I was like, maybe it is. Those are the only two that fit the bill for that. But I am dead if Courtney and Kim are still back at the shelter. I'm so jealous this is somebody's job that they get to like pick the theme of the groups. And <laughs> Wait, then what, name would the- your, what would be your theme? I might, um, I might would definitely be snacks. It would be different I chips. I think you'd go like mob family. Mob family. Maybe like, you know, famous serial killers. Tony Soprano. <laughs> Maybe it would just be like, I want to be like Jeffrey Dahmer and want to be like Ted Bundy. That's weird. Yeah, it's weird. No, um, no but I like salty snacks. I told you I would do Cheetos and Tostitos and Fritos and burritos. I don't know. Um, yeah, I might pick, um, I might pick like a, a a cuisine like with Heather McMahon like we do all different pastas I just see people food for, for like me. you love crime you love reality oh. TV I just feel like you couldn't my top is food though okay. snacks that's true snacks and that's why we call you guys snacks that's snacks. actually and I love true. snacks but it was just an incredible experience if you guys are interested you want to like donate of course Animal Lighthouse those are where the, all these dogs will be available for adoption if you're looking to adopt they're with their fosters right now and then pilots to the rescue check them out he wants you to go with me and I was like, yeah. I just don't think she's gonna do it. I can't I, be in a small plane. I would be, I would be so terrified. I know. I, it's just, it's a lot of people are scared of small planes. They're totally safe. Like, let's just say an engine blows blows out of a small plane. You have five miles to glide. You can find somewhere to land. Like, it's really like, you know, I think people hear things of like Kobe, and again, that was a helicopter. But I, they're they're safe. I grew up on them my my whole mm-hmm. life. So, um, but I was I told him like I don't know if Reina would be down. I think you'd just like hyperventilate. Yeah, I've gotten a lot better about flying since I met you, and you and I like travel so much. We always talk about like what if I like refuse to fly or travel, like what would our business look like. Um, but I've gotten a lot better since I've been with you, and turbulence doesn't bother me anymore. And I've like researched a lot about planes but something that size would be a little scary for me yeah so he's looking to get a bigger one just you know donate to pass the rest you guys and you can uh you can make it happen but i just it was one of the one of the best things I ever could have done on that day. And I just love it. And when we retire in three years, in that's three the years, plan. Yes. I want to get my pilot's license and do that. I want us to get a jet. But I want to fly. You can fly the jet. I'm not flying a jet, but I want to get, I do, I, this is, my dad is a pilot. Like I have a b- bunch of pilots in the family. Like I want to get my pilot's license one day. It's like one of my like pretty badass. plans for, you know, in my forties. Mm-hmm. That'll be your resolution next year. <laughs> <laughs> you can do like a extensive, like, You have to do a bunch of hours, but Uh he was telling me, the pilot was telling me you could, there's a few places like one in Arizona, I think one in Florida where it's like a couple weeks, nonstop extensive program. If you have the time, that'd be pretty bad. You did that (laughs) when I retire in three years, that is the goal (laughs) to be retired and to get a GGE jet. Then Ashley flies it. GG jet, GG jet, GG jet, jet. Um, so this is a big week for me. I'm getting a breast reduction tomorrow. Oh my God. Um, I feel really, really emotional about it. Um, for like so long, this was just like this hypothetical thing and I just didn't expect to like feel this way. Mm-hmm. Um, cause for years I've been saying I want it and I saw the surgeon and I went to the, of course I've, I've done everything you're supposed to do. I got a mammogram. I've gone to all the doctor's appointments. Um, and I'm getting it tomorrow and I just, I feel more emotional about it than I thought I would. I've been like journaling about it and crying at night and um thinking like is this something I really want to do to my body and am I like ready to do this and I'm in my mid-30s it's not an emergency I don't have to do it um but it's something that I've like researched so extensively it's something that I've wanted since I was 19 um it's something I've thought about my whole life and I picked the right doctor. It's the right time. And, you know, I was thinking about backing out. And you said to me, the test that we always give ourselves for everything, you said, do you feel like a huge relief if you think about not doing it? And I don't. So that's how you and I try to judge stuff. Like you and I are always like, if if the answer is yes to that, we don't do it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've just been thinking a lot about like what having boobs this big has meant to me my whole life. And Mm -hmm. I've talked about it a lot on this show, so I don't want to be like super redundant with you guys, but you know, being such a small person with such large breasts and having puberty, hitting puberty at such a young age, being so overly sexualized at such a young age, it frightened me. I wasn't ready for it. Mm -hmm. And I learned how to like harness that sexuality. And that's probably why I'm so sexual. And, um, I just, I, I became over sexualized at such a young age and it's, it's like this giant personality, these giant boobs are like a giant part of my personality. And I feel like I'm like cutting some huge part of myself off. And maybe not everybody thinks about that in terms of like a breast reduction, but it's just, it's been such a big part of my life having boobs this big and being so small and the type of attention I get for it. And I feel like 
ultimately I'm just, I'm done looking like this. I don't want to look like this anymore. So that's why I'm doing it. Um, I don't have terrible back problems or anything like that, yeah. but it's just, it's been a lot of like soul searching more so than I ever thought it was going to be. And you know, I'm slicing my whole body open and I was going through like all my nudes. <laughs> it's like, yeah. I really like my body and I've always been really proud of it, but I'm sort of done with it and I'm ready for this, but I'm scared and I don't know like who I am without these huge boobs. I've always been like that girl with the huge tits. I mean, that was my feeling. And that was like, we've had so many deep talks about this at this point. And I just am like, if you feel like this is a part of your identity that you love, me maybe having a big nose is part of my identity. Didn't love that. Mm -hmm. Can't can't stress it enough. You know, like Mm -hmm. I learned to love it, but I didn't, I wanted to look different. And, you know, I was like, you have to ask yourself all these questions. Truly. Like, do you like, this is defining characteristic of you? You know, like I have the legs, you have the tits. Like, is this like a thing that you aren't going to like that you aren't known for anymore? Mm -hmm. And I mean, you were worried about the scars. Like you just, let's forget about the scars for a minute. Like, do you, you know, so few people are going to see those. No one's going to care. Like, do you want to have smaller breasts? Is that what you want? Your, your, per- not that women are defined by their bodies or their breasts, but I have been defined. You have been, it. and it, is it good or is it bad? Is, are you going to feel like less of yourself without them? And I mean, yeah, the ultimate thing I was like, put your visualize yourself canceling the surgery or saying, let's do it later. Do you feel like a wave of relief? And had you said yes to that question, it would have been like, let's fly, who cares? Do it. Like, cancel it who cares what money you put down it's money we'll figure it out you'll get it back you'll Mm -hmm. postpone it and you just said you didn't feel like that so it seems like it's something that you really want I mean you just don't have to if you don't want to I know and I thought about that too because I've been talking about on the show for so long like what would that look like if I had to like tell everybody I backed out of surgery and it's like you can back out of anything this is a huge decision I don't feel like I owe it to anybody to do anything certainly to my body that I'm not comfortable with yeah but yeah I'm scared I don't like know who I am without this and you know having big boobs is not necessarily everybody's defining characteristic but it has been mine and it affected how girls treated me growing up it absolutely affected how men treated me I don't like know who I am without it. And I am like excited to see who I am without it. It's just, I don't have to like lead with my body so much. And our friends have been really wonderful too, especially our male friends, Mm Francis and I had like a long, Francis Ellis and I had like a long talk about it. And he was so wonderful. And he was just like, how long have you thought about this for? And I was like, since I was 19, he was like, Frana, you've thought about it. You made the decision. You've thought about this Mm -hmm. for years. You did the research. You picked the right doctor. Like you've done it. You're ready. And I feel like our male friends have been so wonderful about this. Just saying like, no one cares about the scars. It's not a big deal. You just have to like make peace with it if that's how you want to look. Yeah. And that's how I want to look. So yeah. Women who have huge breasts like are all different. All women are different regardless. But I'm saying like some just hide them forever. You don't, they don't want their, they wear bigger clothes. You know, they just don't want it. They, you know, they're so happy to get rid of them and you just aren't like that you like will highlight them and accentuate them and so it's just like there's some people that it's like so it seemed it felt like so much more of a no-brainer of like you don't like these you know but you <laughs> you did you know yeah. so it, that's it's, it's it's been like a real battle more for you than me but I mean we've just been talking about it yeah and I appreciate that I have friends I can talk to about this and it wasn't always like that I wore baggy clothes I slouched I took diet pills when I was growing up because I just wanted to like look like the other girls you I like just wanted to like in, yeah. yeah I wanted to lose weight until I looked yeah. like the other girls I was 12 years old taking diet pills it was crazy um and yeah I learned how to harness it and make it a part of my life and I love accentuating and I love being sexy I'm also getting a C cup. I'm not going to go down to like a really small cup, but I'm excited and I'm ready. And I feel like I picked a good doctor, I hope, and I have support around me and I have people to pick me up. And I just, I feel like I'm ready. So, um, tomorrow I will go in for tomorrow surgery. As of, like if, if you guys are listening on Monday, you know, not yeah. tomorrow in real time. But. Yeah. And I'll see you guys on the other side of it. I, you know, it's so funny because we were talking about what size you want to get. And like, for you know, I, I know a lot about bra cup sizes. I've, I've written blogs on it. I've gotten size from like the pros, like the bra whisper in Atlanta, whatever. And it's like, see, the cup doesn't matter. Like, it, you know, you try and like French lingerie, like a D here is like a K for them. Like a lot of women can wear an A all the way up to a C. I could shove my titties in an A. All my bras are 34 Cs. That's just what that's, that's what they are. That's what I always will buy sight unseen if I've if I'm going with a new brand I can also fit in a 36b like I can you know again like it's just it's what I've been sized for it's the size that I wear I don't think of my breasts as large at all they're not by the way but I still have like childhood PTSD from being so flat chested and being like 
crying because I just was so flat and like girls that had breasts, like everyone had breasts before me. And I felt like so, boys didn't like me and they didn't like me for other reasons too. But like, um, you know, my face, but like, I just feel like <laughs> I wasn't, I was upset. You know, I was just like, what if I look like this forever? You know, my mom mm. has like same size breasts as me. I was like, I just hope at least I can look like her, like at least have something. Cause I was like just flat as a board for like a really long time. And like, I would be at basketball camp and like padding my sports bra. Cause I was that embarrassed. Like mm-hmm. I wouldn't want to change in gym. Like nobody cares. Like, but you're a kid, you think it's the end of the world to look different than other people on the exact opposite spectrum of you. And it's so funny to hear you be like, I just, I love your breasts, the size of your breasts. And in my head, I'm still this like flat chested kid where I sometimes have to be like, they are nice. Like for you to ever even say that, I was like, Raina, like I still in my head, when you said that you were like, your breasts look great. Like, you know, maybe you'd want them a little larger, but like, I like your size. I'm like, what breasts? Cause in my head, I'm still like a flat chested little girl. Mm-hmm. Like, it's so weird how it like ca- travels with us forever. And I do have to sometimes like look at myself naked in the mirror and be like, these are nice. <laughs> cause I just don't think of them like that. I, I will never like lose that image. Mm-hmm. Cause it was, it felt so traumatic in the moment. And of course this is not to say that smaller breast or a flatter chest is undesirable at all. I think it's like a beautiful look. Of, of course I am on the smaller side too, but uh, my point is just, that's kind of how you feel when you're growing up and throughout puberty and how it kind of stays with you. So like, I just have to tell you how flattering it was for for me, for you, like queen of like titties, giant titties, (laughs) perfect, you know, like cleavage, everything to even compliment me. (laughs) I was like, wait, really? Um, I I think they're great size. I've never been able to go out without a bra. I I would love to have my nipples out. I would love to just like beam my nipples through my shirt and also do whatever you fucking want. If you have F size, K size boobs, do do whatever you want. For me, it's been a little uncomfortable. I'd like to wear stuff that's a little more. The first thing I'm going to buy is a triangle bikini top with no underwire. What a (laughs) dream. I could never imagine such a thing. I'm going to buy like a shirt that like the V is down my sternum. I've never been able to like show off my Mm -hmm. chest. Yeah, it is crazy for me. I'm like, I don't know who I am on the other side of this. And I was going through all my nudes and I'm like, God, your titties are so nice. Like, am I sure I want to do this? They're the perfect shape. I love my nipples. But like, yeah, I'm ready for this to not be the biggest physically, like the biggest literally and figuratively characteristic about me. What if I got implants and I get like your size, your this size? <laughs> what if I get smaller boobs and I'm like, Ashley, I changed my mind and then we both get implants. <laughs> I can say with uh, certainty, I will never get in. I, I, I love the size of my boobs. This is no shade, but like, I love to not wear a bra. Like my nipples are out all the time, but I will tell you one time I saw this woman walking down the street with like a same type of free people tank top I would wear no bra and just larger breasts, like still perky. I was like, that is the sexiest thing. They were just bouncing. I was like, God damn it. Like, but that's not necessarily what implants would look like. Like she was natural. Uh-huh. I was like, God, that's so hot. I love big Like she's probably kids. getting maybe a lot of unwanted attention for me. <laughs> like, I was just like, God, what if mine just like bounce? They it's, won't. It's sexy. Plus <laughs> we all want, we can't have, I guess. Yeah, like that's the only thing. I would go, if they just had a little more bounce, like they, they just don't. They just... <laughs> Mine are sloppy. They're like jiggly and sloppy <laughs> and it's nice. I mean, the reality is I'm going to have to do this someday. Not everybody has to grow old with your titties, do whatever you want. But you know, as you get older, the skin becomes less elastic. You can't fight gravity. Gravity always wins. So, I mean, they look great now, but I don't know what they're going to look like in a few years. So I'm ready to do it and I'm going to do it. And I, I, that doesn't mean I'm not crying every single night and writing about it. And I almost called my ex last night to be like, you were the last person that saw these. What do you think about this? It was the closest I've ever come to calling him. Listen, w- you keep saying that, but we're heading to Austin this weekend. Um, someone's probably going to see my titties. Like someone's going to see your titties. Like you just don't know, Raina. Right. You need to be, think more positively that one I more person is going to touch these titties. I want somebody to touch these titties. Also, hear me those. out. We go back to Australia. Okay. We go to that bathing suit store where we had a fight <laughs> and we get your first triangle top. <laughs> yo, I was, I'm, I'm pulling up a photo. Did you say yo? Yo. Has she ever said that? <laughs> Bella looked up. <laughs> I saw oh a photo God. from that bathing suit. Those are the biggest boobs I've ever seen I in my know. life. I saw that photo and I was like, I'm ready to not look like this anymore. Raina, That's we wild. talked about this before, but we, Raina and Meryl and I all tried on the exact same 
sexy one piece that had cutouts and we all were quiet while we all sent photos <laughs> to the guys we were seeing or talking to. Not Marina me. I sent it Dylan. to Dylan. <laughs> um, Meryl and I were, da- were dating people, but <laughs> the way we looked so different in them, the three of us, Meryl, small, I'm medium, you're large. Like it was literally like small, medium, large. It was the craziest thing. We all looked so different. I can't wait to wear that bathing suit. I was oh, thinking yeah. about that because I took it out last night. No one has more nudes than me. I have hundreds and hundreds of nudes. Um, so I will commemorate those. Um, maybe with a video on Instagram. We'll see. Um, But that's it. So um, thank you guys for all your support and encouragement. Um, You don't have to DM me. I'm already getting the surgery. Uh, But everybody that's reached out and said this is the best decision I ever made, I appreciate that. And thank you guys for your support. And I love you all. And I'll be all fucked up all week in bed. So maybe I'll respond to a DM. (laughs) Probably (laughs) not. Okay. Quickly, you have one rack. Um, I have one rack. Um, It is Hype House on Netflix. It is the show about TikTokers, which I know nothing about because I'm not 19. Um, I, uh, excuse me. Um, TikTok is not just for teenagers. No, all those kids are 19 okay. on the show. I thought you were saying, like, I don't understand TikTok. No, I'm in TikTok. I'm in, I'm in these TikTok streets. Um, I don't know all these kids, but um, I... <laughs> Sounds so old. I want Ashley to watch it so that we I'm can... I'm dying to watch do it. ...do, like, a deep dive, and Bella's watching it as well. Um, but I will say it's it's hard to watch it. It's It's really sad to me. Like, I think a lot of people see this, like, level of fame and money and beauty that feels so unattainable and people like strive for this their whole lives and this show is the other side of that it's all the people that have attained this Mm -hmm. fame and this money and they are miserable it's just it's a constant content factory none of them are happy filming their lives constantly feeling like they're gonna be canceled every five seconds you know it's it's upsetting these kids are like 19 they're just like lonely they're harassed on the internet they just don't seem that happy and all of their relationships feel very transactional so it's it's a picture of like what you got all these people that like want this extreme wealth and money you get it it like doesn't make you happy so it just you know it makes you think about the fact that like that's not all there is to life and it's all fake yeah uh that and it's in line with the book that i'm reading i talk i don't need to plug it again but it's i'm deeper in it and i'm like loving it it got pretty dark the book called influence that i'm reading can't recommend enough it's exactly in line with that just Mm -hmm. like famous teenagers and you know what is going on on the inside that's not to say that all famous teenagers are sad on the inside it's not all dark but Mm -hmm. um they're they certainly grew up differently than we did and i would not be the person i am today if i grew up with social media i think about all the time i just i was too i cared too much what people thought i i just it would have fucked me up so much to see my friend like people doing stuff without me and feeling excluded and i just think i wouldn't have become like a confident secure person in life if we grew up that way so i i feel for these kids all the time and then you just want it. You want that so badly. And yeah, you're right. You get it. And you're like, okay. And then what do you aspire to? I mean, I could talk about this forever. We all know that. We all know all I care about is teenagers and social media. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I think it's an interesting social experiment. And one of the kids in it says, you know, wh- what am I supposed to tell people that I'm a millionaire and I'm crazy famous and I'm still miserable. I'm still depressed. Nobody wants to hear that. And, right, right, um, right, right. It's an interesting, honest picture of that. If you liked the show about the D'Amelios, like it. I mean, I put like in quotes because it is so sad and so dark um yeah they all sit around talk about how they all have anxiety they have to be in therapy they're getting bullied they're sad like there's not a lot of happy genuine there's not a lot of genuine happy moments yeah ashley will watch it and then we'll talk about it but hype house on netflix um really interesting watch (sighs) okay when the spring sunshine is calling your name don't call for takeout get hello fresh instead their quick and easy meals make feeding the family a cinch and without the high price tag their new fast and fresh options are ready in just 15 minutes or less absolutely amazing we want to thank hellofresh for supporting girls gotta eat go to hellofresh.com slash gge16 and use the code gge16 for 16 free meals plus free shipping there really is so much to choose from there's 40 weekly recipes there's something for everything if you want to cook for kids cook for a date night if you're a vegetarian pescatarian if you want something really simple easy clean up you're just in and out ashley and i love the sandwiches we love the soups lunches the market i just keep adding stuff (laughs) every week i used to have just three meals three dinners and now i'm like lunch meats market (laughs) (laughs) there really is something for every time of the day every palette every skill set um it's so easy to use so creative and this may hellofresh is celebrating asian american and pacific islander heritage month try limited 
time authentic recipes created in partnership with Chef Serbi Sani of New York City's Tagmo restaurant and enjoy a cultural taste tour right in your own kitchen. It is really so fun. You guys will love cooking it. Everything is fresh and delicious and just such a pleasure. We'll give you guys a discount so you can check it out. Go to HelloFresh.com slash GGE16 and use the code GGE16 for 16 free meals plus free shipping. All right, guys, we have a very exciting guest in the studio with us today. She is an award-winning comedian, actor, writer, and musician. Her first book, How to Be Alone, if you want to, and even if you don't, became a number one bestseller and was praised as one of the best books of the year by the New York Times, New York Mag, NPR, so many more. She also has a TEDx talk based on the book called How to Be Alone. Her second book, You Will Find Your People, will be released next year. We are so excited to have her here. Please welcome to the show, Lane more. Hi, thank you. Hi. It's good to be here, surrounded by boobs. <laughs> <laughs> boobs and glitter. Yes. <laughs> you are actually our last recording before I get my boobs removed. Wait, really? Removed? <laughs> Raina, you're not getting a mastectomy. Getting a reduction. <laughs> oh, okay. I mean, I think it's okay to call it that. I actually had a, a woman once, I feel like you'll deeply appreciate this. Um, I started, like, people would, like, hire me to write them, like, original songs or whatever, and someone was like, my friend is getting her a breast reduction. Will you write her like a goodbye song to her boobs and I was like I would love to and I wrote her like a breast reduction theme song wait so we need that I song. feel like I will need to send you that is it later. on Spotify <laughs> um no but I feel like it should be and it was like it's like to the tune of she, she said she really like I like to find out things about people but she said she really loved uh Josie and the Pussycat soundtrack and I was like great so I did it to the tune of uh, three small words uh-huh and it was just like till your big boobs will come undone it was like something like that <laughs> and the <laughs> Four bra sizes will still be gone. It oh, was just like, like so, good. so we can finally have some fun. Yeah, it was good. I um, I was going to surprise you with this. I am going to surprise you with this, but we do have a song in the in the can for this weekend to my boobs. Okay. Yes, we have an good. original. I'll send it to you, Lane, so you good, can hear yes, it. Please. <laughs> well, I guess do a collab album. A just collab like breast album. Reduction. <laughs> People we'll are going to be in. getting breast reductions just to be able to listen to the album. They're like, I'm, I'm I want to like, relate. Wait, I want to relate. <laughs> You're so emo. You're like, I just want to relate. <laughs> My small breasts. I'm like, can you come down to a double A? I yeah. just want to listen to the album. Um, yes. Well, I was just going to ask you, when, when Raina... <laughs> So when Raina said musician, this this place. <laughs> well, when she said musician, what, what do you play instruments or are you a singer or both songwriter, yeah. obviously? Yeah. I'm in a band called it was romance. Um, and I'm like the front person and I play like 20 instruments. And, what? Yeah. You know, do all the things. Yeah. You're so cool. I don't know that Thank we've you. ever had someone in the studio that is a mu- so like in a band. I know. Seriously. Oh, like it's just a bunch of comedians and therapists. <laughs> You're like, in I'm, a band. I'm all of those. I'm all also three. that. <laughs> Yes. I'm all through. My therapist has literally told me, she's like, you have an honorary degree. Like, you know more than most people. And I was like, thank you. Also, sad. Well, Guys, you, this is what you can accomplish when you're single. It's, See? Yeah. It's yeah, insane. I've so much done. Well, also, <laughs> the stuff, the way that you speak, and I had such a wonderful conversation with you yesterday before, ahead of the recording, the way that you speak about being single, being alone, accepting, like, being in your own company. I was like, am I on the phone with a therapist? Like you're very, yeah. you guys will see when you listen to the episode right now. Um, you're very eloquent the way that you Thanks. speak about these things. I was like typing away furiously while you were talking. <laughs> and I actually, and I talk so much about like being single and not that it's like your dream to be single, but like building this life that you're so proud of. And so the way that you speak about it is so eloquent. I was like, Oh, she's also a therapist. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's really funny because I, and I know I'm not alone in this. Like my, well, maybe some parts of this I'm alone in this but the main thing I was gonna say was I didn't have like really great luck with a lot of therapists I had like really poor experiences and I was like oh these people don't seem to understand this so ever since I was a kid um I was really interested in psychology and sociology and why people make the decisions that they make and trying to understand myself and others so I really do feel like obviously like I'm not credentialed whatever you know but I'm like a self-taught therapist and I hear from so many therapists who will give my book and send my TikToks mm-hmm. and stuff to their like patients and so many people who are like I gave my therapist your book so there's something happening there I just need to get it to where people will pay me that hourly rate well after this maybe they will I think you could just tr- you could do it but you just have to write a disclaimer but we find that to be our greatest compliment when people say right my therapist recommended your podcast we're like oh, yeah it's so flattering exactly and you know that you're not a ther- like whatever I'm not trying to like you know meet someone in a back alley and be like I'm kind of I'll kind of do it you know but, like, yeah. but, but at the same time you know I know that there's 
I think what it is, and I'm sure this is the case for for y'all as well, is that like it's like the lived experience combined with that knowledge. Like there's something yep. about that where I think it's more powerful than somebody who's like read a bunch of books about that. Like I've literally lived it and had to navigate it myself. So yeah, yeah it makes sense that well, you could. Well, connect. and therapists really, I guess, really aren't supposed to tell you what to do, you know? So I know ones that are more direct, which is what I would need to, to go to, but yeah. there's just so much of like, you really can't, you're, you kind of have to toe that line. I'm sure sometimes therapists are like screaming on the inside. Like, I just want to tell them what to do, but they can't. I, yeah. I don't know in terms of like real therapists. <laughs> I do know that whenever I give people advice, I couch it in so many different things because I find a lot of the like mainstream advice out there really boring only because it's really like, it's just like overly simplified. Mm -hmm. It's just like, just do this girl. That's all. I mean, I cannot, Ashley and I hate this when we see people and it's like this manufactured confidence. It's like, you're a bad bitch and you don't have to deal with this. And it's like, no, I'm a sad bitch and I do have to deal with this. (laughs) And I'm tired and I need more help than that. It's everybody's experiences are so different everybody has like a different financial background educational background yes. some people want kids they have to make decisions based on that i don't so yeah. it's everybody's life experience is different i see these girls on instagram they're like you're a bad bitch get out there work you don't need him leave his ass and no. i'm just like maybe you need his ass i don't know it's just not and like so much of it is not trauma informed like all of my work right. is trauma informed and like I, like i see a lot of especially like when it comes to sex and stuff and like so much of the work that i do is sex and relationships where people are just like you know what you just tell them what you want and you don't like take shit from anyone and I'm like some of us have been traumatized Angela like what well, th- there's they don't take <laughs> like yeah trauma there's no nuance like it's no. just and it, it sells and I'm like I, I, don't, I don't know why I, it's it's, it's, it's like it's like um, Tony Robbins Rachel Hollis it's very like sweeping generalizations not taking into account people's personal life experience and it feels it feels inauthentic to yeah, me yeah. to not acknowledge that like almost no one can do that and also a especially like we've literally socialized women in a complete opposite way. So suddenly telling women like walk in a totally different way. You got this girl. Like, no, they don't. No one knows how to walk backwards easily. Like it just, we'll say in like, you have have as many hours in the day as Beyonce. It's like, what? Yeah. Like, how do you even compare? She has assistants. The average person. How did we get there? Statements like that are crazy to me. So don't make, don't let people like make you feel crazy. Like I see all these like one advice fits all types of advice. And it's just like, None of us are the same. I had a very different life experience than everybody. My mom's a therapist. I grew up in a therapy forward. She's also, she didn't hug me a lot, but pretty sex, <laughs> pretty sex positive environment. Yeah. So it led, but Ashley and I tried she it. She encouraged other people to hug you. She did. My dad hugged me and my aunt. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, of, someone else can touch you. <laughs> yeah. I want that for you. Not from me. She was like, why didn't you ask me to fly up and help you after your breast reduction? I was like, oh no, no, that won't be necessary. That's okay. Um, we didn't da- do that. But anyways, yeah, let's talk about the inspiration for the book. Um, Yeah, I mean, honestly, that was a beautiful transition if you... Uh, I don't know if you know that it was, but it really was. We love a transition. um, Well, because... One of the biggest inspirations for How to Be Alone was, you know, and not to put words in your mouth, but I just heard some stuff you said, and I'm I'm taking a leap, uh, was not having the family that you're supposed to have. There's this idea of this, like, picture-perfect family that everybody has, and everybody always feels so, so loved and, like, so, so good, and everything's just, like, perfect, perfect, perfect. And, like, even though, like, you know, your parents might be great, again, seriously not trying to put words in your mouth, but... Most people don't have that. Most people have like sticky, messy, complicated relationships with their families. And I grew up on my own. I didn't really have any, I had a more extreme version of that. But nonetheless, like I hear from people all the time and I love that we're talking about this more. Like, yeah, this was kind of weird with this parent. And like, so I love hearing that. So basically the the beginnings of it where I want to talk about what it's like when you don't really have this like solid, perfect family you're told you're supposed to have. And then you go to school and you're trying to make friends and that doesn't really work because you don't have this solid, perfect family everyone's supposed to have. And then you're trying to like find a romantic relationship, but that's really hard. Just how like all this stuff connects and makes it so much harder for you to have beautiful relationships with people because your foundation was not great, but also like how I've been able to navigate that because it's not a death sentence Mm -hmm. like being alone and not having the support systems that we were all promised is not a death sentence absolutely not and that's so important for people to think about you can't if you're 
foundation isn't stable and you're constantly in survival mode, how are you supposed to make friends, get be, you know, find a partner, do all these things? Well, like, to be fair, you have as many hours in the day as Beyonce. <laughs> so, you know, work it out, girl. <laughs> work it out. You're a bad bitch. <laughs> You got saying. this girl. Clean your face, girl, or whatever. <laughs> yeah. I say to my friends, I've said this to like a couple friends um, who have said to me, like, I'm worried I'll never find a partner. I'm worried I won't find anybody better than what I have now. And I've had to say to girlfriends, like, why do you think it's a fate worse than death to not be with a romantic partner? There's a million other things you could do with your life. But like some of your relationships that you are in, not the people I'm talking to, but my friends I've specifically spoken to, I think your relationship is a fate that is like death. It's like, I would rather be alone than be in your yeah. relationship. But the, but people, I mean, if you have a lot of trauma, you're, you're searching for a partner because you didn't have the support for you might be searching for your dad, you know, sure. like uh, unconsciously, but um, subconsciously. But can we just go back to that? Like, I just wanted to hear you keep talking. <laughs> um, yeah, unlike what did you do? You know, how did you, did you come to this realization later in life? Or I just would love to hear more about your, your journey. <laughs> which, which realization? With this, I grew up with this not perfect family. It yeah. hindered me to maybe make other relationships and. Oh yeah. Where, to I, get to kind of where you are now. And yeah, and, I always, I, I always knew. I mean, I think it's been like an unraveling of like, I knew it was like really fraught, but I did not know how much. And it's just been this constant like, oh, wow, it was really bad. That was really bad. And, you know, all these things that happened. Um, but I always knew I was alone. Like I, I knew that on like a core level of like, oh, I'm going to like kind of be on my own in this. And I think so many kids um, who survived like really difficult childhoods know that feeling. And I only know that because what's funny is like when I wrote the book, I was like, oh, there's a chance that I'm going to put this book out and people are going to be like, who is this like weird, lonely bitch? No one feels like that. Like, bye. Like there was a genuine part of me that was like, what if no, I just had never seen anybody mm -hmm. talk about this ever. Like every single TV show you watch, every single book you read, it's like, I came from a great family, but life was still hard. And like, <laughs> you know, like I just <laughs> fine or whatever right. but it's very hard when you when you had a really rough start in the world to have someone be like I have the best boyfriend in the world and like I'm you know all my friends are so wonderful and I get paid like 80 million dollars a year and my childhood was wonderful but like I still have problems I'm like still thank struggled. you well you my it's tough my <laughs> uh, best friend said to me once I'll never forget it like I did actually have a great family upbringing but she said you got a head start in life right you know that's all it is and I'm, I'm I will very much recognize it and you do you start yeah. you, you have a head start that's all and it's like and I think that's what it is it's like <clears throat> I'm not like resentful or, or whatever but it's just there was just a need in me and I think to so many other people for that to be acknowledged because mm -hmm. we talk about that like that's everyone's baseline when it's not. And I just think that was something that was so much of, of the book and so much of what I realized in my life, was, which was like, oh, this person is like ahead of me or has an easier time than me because they had a great start. Like they literally <laughs> were like sent off with like the best, you know, metaphorically and maybe literally, but like with the best shoes, with the best supplements, like they, of course they were able to run farther faster. Of course they were. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know, someone chopped off both my legs and like, you know, punched me in the face and gave me like <laughs> flaming hot Cheetos and was like, can you run 18 miles? And I'm like, right. I'll try. Why right. can't I do it? I have as many hours in the day as we have. <laughs> I'm never going to stop. That's the title. Yes. Yeah. I'm never going to stop referencing this. Okay, this time of year, I love the feeling of soaking up the sun, but with all that exposure, I'm always worried about protecting my skin. I can give my skin the protection it needs and soak up some much needed sun with Native. Thanks to Native for supporting Girls Gotta Eat, Native makes safe, simple, effective products that people use every day with trusted ingredients. Get 20% off your first order by going to nativedo.com slash GGE or use promo code GGE at checkout. I love literally everything they do in the shower, after the shower, and I am crazy about the sunscreen. I use it in the morning when I sit out. I like to have breakfast outside, and it's really sunny, and it just protects my skin really well. Native's quickly absorbing, ultra sheer, hydrating, and lightweight sunscreen formula offers broad-spectrum SPF protection from UVA and UVB rays. All Native sunscreen is made with a 
20% active zinc oxide formula that is dermatologist tested. Feels great on your skin. Feels like it moisturizes. It's really fantastic. Love the scents. Um, you know, Ashley loves the coconut and pineapple. I love the rosé. We are both huge fans of the sweet peach and nectar for your face and body. And of course, there is unscented as well. If you would like, give your skin the protection it deserves with Native's mineral sunscreens. Right now, go to nativedo.com slash GGE or use promo code GGE at checkout to get a sweet 20% off your first order. That's nativedeo.com slash GGE or use promo code GGE at checkout. You said something to me yesterday, and it was so eloquently said, that which is that we are socialized from birth, especially women, to think that it is like a fate worse than death to be alone. Whether it's without a romantic partner, without friends, we aren't socialized from birth to learn how to enjoy our own company, um, travel alone, sit at a restaurant alone, things like that. And I thought that was so eloquently said that like we are told from a very young age, find somebody, have a plus one, do not walk into a room alone. Yes. We aren't telling people it's like okay to live without that. Mm -hmm. Well, we're telling men that, but <laughs> yeah, right. we're not. Right. Yeah. We're not telling you women yourself that. quickly yesterday. You said I, we tell people. I mean, women. Yeah, yeah, yeah like exactly. It's, it's like Bachelor or like Spinster. Like yes. I think we're coming away from it. Like I've rewatched the Sex and the City um, pilot recently, yeah. and it's like it was. It was like a fate worse than death. Even though they were the the best ones to do it in that time, it was right. still very much like she can't find a partner, you know, I don't know. So yeah. when you think about like you go to a restaurant, you see like a man sitting alone and it's so sexy and confident. You see a woman sitting alone and people are like, Oh, and I think it's so sexy when anybody can do it. But I, well, that's what I'm saying. I don't understand. Like, and so I, I think that was the interesting thing is like, I was coming from such an extreme of like, there was no option for me. So whenever, you know, whenever people are like, Oh my God, how do you do it? And I'm like, I didn't really, I didn't really have another choice. Mm -hmm. Like I had to learn how to develop these skills. I had to learn how to develop this because a lot of people did not feel. And a lot of times like weren't safe for me. Like I just, it took me a long time to find mm -hmm. that. So if that's hard, like you're going to do one of two things, you're going to like sit inside all the time, or you're going to think like, I don't know, I guess I'll go to the movie alone. I don't know. I guess I'll go to dinner alone. And like, what's funny is I didn't necessarily know that the, the weight of the stigma around it when I would like, you know, tell people like, oh yeah, I'm going to go and like travel by myself. And they were like, you what? I've always wanted to do that. I could like, it was like climbing Everest was like me, you know, taking a trip mm -hmm. out of town for yeah. two days. But I take a solo trip in how to be alone. And the things people said to me when I was like, oh no, I'm here by myself. And it was like, you're going to die. <laughs> like you're going to die <laughs> so gonna die much. Alone. <laughs> no, but just like, you're going to die on this trip. Like yeah. something's going to happen to you. Yeah. Like this is going to be awful. But yeah, we really do specifically to women, we, we make this idea that like, oh, you better like find a husband. Like even though like all these things are so antiquated, they're not relevant anymore. Like to like, you better find a husband. Like we only did that because we weren't letting women work. Right. Like <laughs> you better find a husband was because like you'll starve and die because you have no other way to make yes, income. Yes, 100%. Don't have, you're not and your only purpose in life is to make children and manufacture babies. You can't do that without a husband because you also have to pay for those things. Yes. Right. It, it doesn't exist It's all anymore. capitalism. I just, I don't, I don't. <laughs> Well, and just, we were actually on a podcast with Chris Stefano recently, just kind of talking about, we are still rooted in these old things that don't even apply anymore. You would, your dad would give you away at your wedding. Cause there was like land in exchange, yeah. you know? So it's like, and he was like, here you go. Like I'll take that land now. Like <laughs> who gives this woman to this man? What? Yeah. You never say that to me. Also, why did my dad own me first? And now my <laughs> husband will like, it's just all yeah. little suspicious. So if people, I just, I, I, my favorite kind of people are the people that take a step back and realize like it doesn't apply anymore. Well, and that's the thing. And especially like, if you're not seeing like, I know it now because the book is out and like I hear from so many people and it started all these conversations. But when I was writing it, I was like, is this stuff OK to say? Because I see this very clearly. This is very clear yeah. to me that like this is what we've told people. This is why we've told them. And like I have to unlearn a lot of this stuff. But I hadn't really seen people talk about it. Hadn't really seen people phrase it in a way that cracked that open for me. But but literally by by having those conversations, like that's I think that's the only way it like changes. Uh-huh. I mean, and you said something that like really spoke to me. You were like, it's not my dream to be single. It's not it's not my dream life, but I'm here, so let's make something good out of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it, it's like, so the reason that I'm I like made the title how to be alone if you want to, and even if you don't, because the way I see it is like there's two types of people who feel alone or who are single, whatever. There's people who like 
want to because they're just like, you know what? Screw dating. It's been really hard for me. Screw getting close to people. That's been really painful. I don't want to do it anymore. And then there's people who are like, you know what? I would love to date, but I am not attracting very good people. I would love to get close to people, but the ones that I found have not been good. So I think there's two parts of this. And we have this idea of like, oh no, you're going to be alone. But some people have made that choice as like an act of self-care. And also there's some people who like really don't want to be like, I'm a like I'm a super hopeless romantic like very much like love love but I'm not gonna like I I firmly believe like finding somebody is luck and timing it has nothing to do with anything else that's it Mm -hmm. there is no like I don't know I I just get really frustrated anytime someone's like I deserved this I'm like everyone does (laughs) yeah everyone does right and it's it's the people making an active choice I just this long conversation with this guy he went through all this therapy and self-reflection on like and finally realized like you have to just pick somebody you know somebody that you like but you have to decide to invest in them and commit to them like it's a just active decision like people that's not sexy to talk about it's 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 supposed to be the fairy tale your soulmate the universe brought you together like it's actually somebody deciding I'm gonna be with you and most importantly, it's both people deciding. Both, pe- both people. Of well, course, I mean, I, I know that's what you meant, but but the reason I, the only reason that I say that is because so many of us, myself included, have been like, I'm going to put in the work and I've decided. And it's like, yeah, but the other person's lazy as yes, fuck. exactly. Like, <laughs> okay, so I like this notion of putting in the work and I've been like thinking about this for a while. These All these people that are like, I'm single and I want to put in the work. I'm going to go to therapy and address all my issues. How many people do we know that never did any work on themselves have been in long-term relationships? They just picked a person. That person picked them back. Like, there's nothing so <laughs> wrong and broken about you. Plenty of really broken people are in long-term relationships and it doesn't mean that they're so whole and fixed and their lives are so great. Right. I I just, I'd love to talk more about the how to be alone. Yeah. I mean, so there's, there's a lot of different things that I did, but I think so much of it was like reducing that part of me that felt like, I don't know, like, like just me was like a consolation prize or something. Like if it was just me and it's like, oh, actually though, no, I'm like really cool and fun. And I have so much fun hanging out with myself. Like, yeah, I have a good, I have a good time. I watch stuff. I like, I eat food. I like, I tell myself silly jokes that I laugh at. Like once I realized like, Oh, I really like myself and you know, don't get me wrong. Like that's a whole process. And I don't like when people talk about that, like it's easy. It's not, especially if you have any kind of trauma at all. Um, yeah, just really starting to see myself as like, oh, okay, like I'm going to be with me for the rest of my life. So if Mm -hmm. I'm just like constantly resenting that, like that's that, how is that helpful to me? It's not. Why do you think, I'm just curious, you know, in your soul searching and therapy you've done, because I, I like to spend time alone, probably more than most people. I really, really enjoy it. I like to be alone in my thoughts. I quarantined alone during COVID. I like it. I enjoy myself. So like, how can you get more comfortable with that? Like if somebody's like, I want to be more comfortable physically being alone. I mean, it's so hard because there's not like just one thing. And I think that that's why like whenever, you know, I write about this or do videos about this or like, you know, um, in the book, it's so in depth of like showing my story about that because I don't want to tell someone like this is it for you because really everybody has a different reason why that's hard for them. Mm-hmm. You know that's what I mean? Point. So yeah. it's like, I, I'm, I'm hesitant to be like, this is it. it. And it's, I mean, that's a tough part. Cause it's like, yeah, whenever I do interviews or podcasts, they're like, what's the answer? And I'm like, well, do you want to talk about book? yours? <laughs> like we can talk about you. <laughs> yeah. Not, you know, I thought some of your actionable stuff was great. I eat food that I like. I, I get to make a meal that right. only I well, like. That, right. I mean, and that's, so I guess that's, I guess those would be my, those would be, I thought you meant like something outside of that, like something deeper than that. And I'm like, I don't know that there is something deeper than uh-huh. that. I think it's just mm-hmm. like, I think it's doing those things. And then I think it's like exposure therapy. I think it's just like, you can say like, oh, I'm really afraid of like taking a step toward the, the deli. Like, you know, unless you're like literally agoraphobic, you <laughs> just t- start taking steps. Like, I, you know what I mean? I do think it's similar where it's like, you have to spend time alone to get comfortable with spending time. Well, alone. practice like anything right. else. Like yeah. we're not, we're not b- born knowing how to date or flirt or anything else. It's just like practicing. So yeah, it, I think everybody has a different bar there's probably some women in the world that have never gone to a workout class alone. They always go with their friends. It's like, that's something I've always pretty much done alone. So that's Mm -hmm. one step going to a movie alone, going to dinner alone. Like that might be the final frontier, like to go sit at a bar alone or at it. I I, I, I'll go to dinner alone, but I'll sit at the bar. (laughs) Like I've never done a table. I I have, I always 
to well, with during yeah, the day. I, guess. So, I don't know. So it is terrifying. It is day. terrifying. <laughs> it is terrifying. I don't know that you're like, I'm afraid of when doing it at out. night. Yeah. No, when the sun sets, I cannot. I just like to sit at the bar in general. Like I think so too. And I think that's an easy way to go in. I remember. Those chairs are not comfortable. I remember. Well, you have somebody to talk to because it's your bartender, which is nice. I don't want to talk to anyone. But sometimes they like hover. They hover. I don't want to talk to the bartender. I'm like, I'm reading I took a trip by myself. I went to Europe. I did six countries by myself. And I remember the first time I was in London. It was 2006, 2015. I went out to dinner by myself at night, sat at the bar. I was terrified. I brought supplies. I brought like a book, magazine, headphones. I brought like something to write with and a notebook, like just in case there was a second where I was looking around the room and somebody like felt bad for me. It like psyched. It was so hard to like walk into the restaurant and ask for a seat by myself. It like really scared me. I remember this moment and I like did it and I was like, oh, no one Not cares. Deal, yeah. no, one no one cares, cares about me. That's the thing. But, but it's so funny because so much of it is just societal bullshit. Like literally when I go in and I'm just like especially when I'm like touring or traveling or whatever and I'm just like I'm like oh yeah one per, like just just one and there's a little part of me and it's not my voice it's like things I've heard that's just like just one mm-hmm. and it's like but I not I don't really feel that way that is yeah, the moment you actually been can be like I I'm am a bad, a bad bitch, bitch you yes know? yes but what would Beyonce do no, I'm just <laughs> no but, be, have a whole, but because have a whole team but because honestly like yeah, exactly. Every time I've done it, I'm like, no one's looking at me. No one's looking around. And also, if anything, I do, I really think that people like look at me when I am doing that. And they're like, that girl's cool. That's the thing. Like, I really do. I think it's sexy. I, I think it, it is, really but, is. But you have to tell yourself it's sexy. Like yes. you, you're going to feel how you're telling yourself to feel. So if you're like, I'm a fucking loser and everybody's staring at me and they're yeah. wondering why I'm here alone, then you're going to feel like shit. Yes. But if you mm-hmm. tell yourself like, I'm amazing. This is a badass, confident thing to do. You know, it's how many, I mean, I feel like we have this image of like this sexy woman, like on a patio in Paris, like just alone, you know, smoking cigarettes drinking a glass of wine whatever it is reading a book and it's like it's sexy like visualize that like whatever cheesy image you need to conjure up you know maybe it's Beyonce just do that because it's the it is it's the self-talk Right. And what is the alternative also? I took a lot of trips in my life by myself because I had a job that would let me, but I didn't have a lot of friends that had the time and the yeah. money. So I could have just not gone and thought about it forever. I've been like, yeah. I wish somebody could be with me. Or you can just go do it. Like, mm-hmm. I've never not done something because I couldn't go do it with my boyfriend, you know? And I, I'm very lucky. Ash is very lucky. We have great friends. But I will do something alone. I will go see a movie by myself. I'm not going to not do something because God forbid I do it alone. Yeah, I think that that's what it is. And I I don't like for for women, especially like I know some men are affected by this uh, as well. But, you know, women have just that stigma attached. That's just added. But, you know, I just it makes me so angry at the idea that like women would keep themselves from enjoying their own lives because they don't have someone to share. Like, that's so Mm -hmm. insane. Like these years are so valuable every single year that you're alive. Like these this is your life. And the other thing is, too, like. You have to realize, like, I think so many people have this idea that, like, oh, if I do this, if I go to this thing alone, like, what if this bad thing happens? But, like, what if a good thing happens? Because I can't tell you how many people, um, I had somebody, like, reach out to me not long ago. It was, like, I was touring and somebody was, like, I kind of want to come to your show tonight. You know, I want to come, but I don't have anyone to go with. And I know, you know, you always say to just, like, come by yourself. So I think I'm going to do that. And I was, like, I was, like, let me just, like, reiterate. Like, I really do think that you should do that. And later that night, she came up to me and she was, like, I met, like, five girlfriends who, like, all all like, right, I hear it all the time. We hear it all the time. And you wouldn't have met them if you were with a friend. Exactly. Because you wouldn't have reached out. You wouldn't have been open to that. And now you have, like... I hear that happens so often. So yeah, exactly. Just shifting that. Like, what if something like really bad happens and I feel awful? Like, what if you're actually more open to like making friends, something beautiful happens because you mm-hmm. were open. A hundred percent. We hear it. I mean, it's, it's probably one of my favorite messages we get is yeah. that I came alone and I made friends. Yeah. Oh, what an honor that we get to do that and facilitate yeah. that for one. And then other stuff, like I came alone and I had a threesome later. Like we got, <laughs> that happened recently. We were like, what? <laughs> like this girl, I couldn't even believe what I was reading. I read it over and over. I was like, this bitch came alone and fucked two people later. 
<laughs> that is so great. Funny. But anyway. Um, I mean, what an honor to a performer, to a comedian that you went alone. What an honor to a restaurant that you wanted to go there so much that you couldn't even wait for another person to come with you. I mean, of course, you should be safe. I mean, I've traveled alone. I've done some crazy shit by myself. I've gone to Cambodia and Morocco and Turkey alone. That shit's wild. But, <laughs> you know, I think that you can make calculated risks and feel safe. And yeah. there's so many things, especially when you're traveling, when you're traveling, if you just plan, if you make plans and then go on like group tours and stuff, you can meet people. Visit a city is a great website if you guys want to plan trips and Viator is great if you want to plan tours within those cities. But some of the best ways I met people was like I went to Southeast Asia by myself and a lot of people travel there alone and they use these websites to do tours and you meet people. Everybody's alone on these trips too. Yeah. And God mm, forbid, yeah. everybody, God forbid you're alone. People want to know what you're doing alone. How did you get here by yourself? What is this trip for? It's you're an intriguing amazing way. almost. Yes. Well, that's the thing. And I like, I think of it in, you know, when you were talking about that, it's like sexy when a guy does it, like anytime I'm on tour and I'm eating alone, like, I think like, what is, what's the difference? What's the difference? Like if, if, uh, if like a hot performer guy was like on tour by himself, he's like eating dinner and like, he's on tour. Like that's badass. That's like totally. really sexy and cool. And I was like, I was like, and I'm a hot girl yeah. doing this and I'm on tour and I'm eating a load and I'm looking really cool. And I'm going to go perform for like 600 people tonight. Like that's fucking sexy. 100%. And like, look, whatever. But like, you know, like if someone's listening to this, they're not a performer, but it's the same thing. Like, why does it have to be any different? It's why? not. It shouldn't be. And we should not. just start shaming men that are alone and being like, you fucking loser. And just even when are you going to find someone? <laughs> yes. I, I wish you well. Do you have pepper spray? All right. Bye. <laughs> Like, <laughs> oh my god! Okay, I have a question for you because you brought this up. I know the holidays are over, but I would be remiss if we didn't. The holidays ask you. are never over. We have several months. There's a February one. Oh, well, actually, we have a February yeah. one. All right, so let's talk about this is a stretch. Let's talk about being alone on the holidays. Um, I mean, obviously, Christmas is past. We get a lot of stuff about Thanksgiving holidays. You know, people being like, "Why are you single? When are you going to find a boyfriend?" But all right, let's talk about being single on Valentine's Day. Oh yeah. So, um, November, I'm like a huge Halloween fan. I'm like the biggest Halloween nerd, but the stretch as soon as Halloween ends, it is a dark winter. It is like <laughs> if that like November to March holiday are just like, I, it's tough. Cause they're mm -hmm. all, it's all about like, you have a perfect family, right? You have perfect friends, right? You're loved by everybody. Right. And it's just, it's just so frustrating, but you know, similarly, um, for people who don't know this, I have uh, like an entire chapter in how to be alone devoted to like talking about how to spend the holidays alone and how to kind of deal with that because mm -hmm. there's just so much to navigate. And really like the messages that we have in our society are so like, you're not alone, right? You're going to spend it with people, right? You have this, right? Um, but I feel like that at least with Valentine's Day, I don't see it chipping away with anything else, but at least with Valentine's Day, I feel like there is a backlash of that to where it's like, you know, like seeing Valentine's Day and things like that. I think for me, the biggest thing for Valentine's Day is to realize you can do all those things by yourself. Yeah. You can go get yourself really nice chocolates. Yeah. Valentine's Day. I don't really think if people are like, if to me, I, I hear you about the holidays. I, I imagine that's, that's tough. Like it's Valentine's Day, whatever, who gives a shit? You that's know, like, what I'm saying. Right. I don't feel like there's as much of a pressure, like, and aesthetically, I love Valentine's Day. It's like all hearts and pink yeah. and red. red like, it's amazing. Yeah. We have a show that weekend. You know, people, I, I like that people do like girls night stuff. But other than that, like, I, it's just a day. Yeah, it's it's always a big time for me, too, because I do a comedy show called Tinder Live. And like, it's always a big time for me for people who are like, I, I don't subscribe to this like traditional idea of Valentine's Day. Like I want to go do something that's just like it's fucking stupid, right? And the like, restaurants are crowded. Sometimes the they do a, a are, price fix. It's you're like, nightmare. what is this? Yeah, it's a nightmare. That's the thing. Even if you're in like when I've been in relationships around Valentine's Day, I've still been like, no, I would rather go do my comedy show. No, I would rather just go Me do too. something else. Like I don't yeah. want because it just seems you're like you go into those restaurants and you're just looking around and you just feel like. A lot of the couples are dead inside. Oh Alex. my God! Reina, 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 okay. like, you just unlocked this memory. I'll let, I'll let Raina share. Both of us just shot up at the same Wait, time. Oh, I know. I was like, and it's so funny because I almost didn't say it because I think I knew what I was about to awaken. She and loves love this story. I'll let her. Well, kill Ashley it. and I have spent the last four Valentine's days together. Uh, we're it. always together, either on a plane or on a trip. We don't a lot. Of, we have been on the road a lot. I mean, outside. We've of been COVID. on the road, but we were spending Valentine's Day um, in Vancouver. We were at a comedy festival. We were sitting at the bar at this really nice restaurant, yeah, it was nice South hotel. Yeah, it was beautiful. People were all dressed up, and Ashley was having we're having a time. We were having a great time, we're just eating, probably drinking. too loud, yeah. just laughing.
laughing, cutting up. And we looked around the room and the, every single couple was like not speaking. I mean, no that's one looked saying. happy. It was wild. Right. And I mean, I, and, I mean, I worked in restaurants my whole life. We call that like amateur night. It's a shitty night to be out. Right. But, but the people who don't know that, specifically the women who don't know that, they are thinking, oh my God, I could be doing that. And it's like, oh, if you knew what that Dang, looks yes. like, you would not you be envious. Want it. You, you would it. love that you were masturbating alone and getting high. Like you would love it. That's that so last much night, cool. I had the I'm, best end of my night last it's night. It's a beautiful evening. But <laughs> like, I just, again, it's, that's, I think that's the biggest thing for me is just like realizing that all these things that we're aspiring to are, are not even yeah. that good. And also for the record, like if I'm going to be dating somebody, I want Valentine's Day every night. <laughs> I want to be courted constantly. Right. You're, you're only doing it one day a year of breaking up. I'm breaking That's up. That's so true. Like this, a guy just treats you like shit until Valentine's Day rolls around. He's like, here's your fucking candy and card and we're gonna go to uno pizzeria later yeah, I got us, like a no. corner t- a corner table <laughs> great <laughs> this is i just so like you fun. said like sometimes it just isn't even like what you think it's gonna be listen i love relationships i love having a partner my last boyfriend was great he was a great friend to me the sex was wonderful i think that relationships can be really indulgent you eat so much you fuck so much you just do so many activities i love being in a relationship but so many relationships i mean relationships are work they're a job too mm-hmm. you know it, even even they're best ones and also you know and to that end it's also like people aren't selling them like couples are not really selling it for me you know what I mean when they're just like it's so much work and like you do really hate them you know like I would stop him if I could but it's like it is what it is and it's like it's still like a little worth it and you're like Ugh. a little single, worth it single forever you know what like that's always how they sound well, we don't that want, sounds like having kids like also. Yes. the brain and I always say like there's not one relationship I'm envious of you know and that's something to think about and we know amazing couples and I'm like I don't want any of this I mean I personally just I do really like being around people I have like a, a lot of friends I'm, I'm not I, I like being alone as well but to me alone is such a crazy word to use for being single you know what I mean alone like, well that's what I'm saying right yeah. and that's not that's not alone you're you're just like it's, I feel so not alone because I don't because I have people I never me. leave her alone yeah like, right <laughs> And also, it's okay to be alone, and you know, but I just feel. But also, like, no one's saying that about Leonardo DiCaprio. They're like, oh no, he seems like really alone. Yeah. It's like, first of all, he has this like pack of like sixteen bros. Okay, yeah. I feel like this is a perfect segue that you came because you never feel alone. Neither do I. I think we have great friends, and we're like so lucky that we like do all these things. Because Lane's next book is about making friends, mm-hmm. and I think people are like, okay, so if you really feel alone out there, guys, and you're like, I need a relationship, nothing else can fill me, I'm alone. Like people ask us all the time, how do I make friends? Well, I wanted to ask. I want to ask yeah. you that too like do you prefer to be alone or do you like to be around people and like because everybody's kind of different that way too I personally I think Raina likes to actually be alone more than me like Definitely. I even just yeah. like to be with Azul like I just kind of like a body in the room and I think a dog is a great choice too like I'll my night plan will be like I'm watching a movie with Azul like that. so okay <laughs> so we didn't actually talk about this but this is a, a very good thing there is a huge theme in the book where I ended up getting a rescue dog. So like mm-hmm. there is a huge it. thing that I talk about in how to be alone, which is how powerful animals can be. Oh if you're God. like, Oh, I want to be like, maybe it's been a little bit scary for me to connect with humans right now, but animals feel like a safe thing. Like I go through my whole story of like how I was like, maybe, you know, I want a dog. How do I do this? And then realizing like it was so healing for me to form mm-hmm. this incredibly intense attachment to the dog that I have now. And like, she comes with me on tour. Like yeah. we're, we, we cuddle every night. Like she sleeps like snuggled up against yeah. me. Like it's, It's been this really powerful thing. And the coolest thing is like, I hear from so many people who are like, I adopted a pet because of you. And now it's like, did this. And I'm like, I'm rescuing dogs. Like, but it's so, it's so powerful because to me, that's not, alone I don't I'm never alone I'm never alone not that it's a bad thing but I'm never alone I'm just like with him all the time he's like he's so much better than a lot of people right (laughs) she's like my favorite person and it's like if you want me to hang out with you you have to be better than my dog like if you're not I I don't I'm gonna I'm gonna stay but she's so fun and so cuddly and so silly like I will literally like play weird little games with her like you know it's it's such a it's such a huge thing for me so then to answer the question of like what do I prefer I mean hands down I she changed my, my dog changed my life. Like Mm -hmm. I would rather be with her to me. That doesn't feel lonely. And I think it's only, it's a hard question to answer because I just wanted to feel safe in the company 
of whoever I was with Mm -hmm. emotionally, physically, just all the things usually just, you know, emotionally was, was the thing. But when I'm around people who I really love and I feel like really safe with and feel really like good with, it's a beautiful, wonderful feeling. It really is. But I think I just, I still need that recharge time. Like I'm, I'm Mm -hmm. more introverted than people would assume. No, I, I need the, the (laughs) that's why I mean, I, I read, I love being social. I love going out with friends, but I need to recharge and I have to do that alone. And I mean, I don't have a pet at home, but I like all the things you were saying before. I get to watch what I want. I get to eat what I want. I get to stay up as late. I can walk around in a robe from five o'clock until I go to sleep with no bra on. My titties are hanging out i'm smoking weed i'm just dropping food on the floor like i food on the floor <laughs> i mean i would never you guys know no, my but, but all that's white. the thing because we always talk about it like oh you don't have anyone it's like yeah i also don't have anybody to give me a bunch of shit oh about God. whatever i want to do right i don't have to cook dinner for my ex anymore listen i love cooking but like i don't have to think about what you want to watch i don't have to oh think my about God. what you want to do it's so crazy i do whatever i want oh, all whatever the time. i want like what a dream life great. like i don't really want to live with people and i i love live with a partner and i'm loving all these articles that are coming out about <laughs> coming out a couple are coming out is living right, separately yeah. <laughs> and I finally just, straight people yeah. can come out <laughs> yeah <laughs> like there i think it was like on that article was circulating maybe it was on the today show i can try to find it and post it about that couple i think they were canadian but they just had this beautiful relationship for 20 years living separately and i get to do whatever the fuck all the time what a dream like why listen no shade if you love your partner you guys want to share a fucking closet and a queen bed but like what <laughs> <laughs> I just or, and i have it. to constantly compromise i mean like yeah of course like some of it is going to be compromised like yeah of course that's totally fine that's yeah. like every relationship but every relationships yeah. are beautiful i guess yeah the way you hear <laughs> the way you hear some people talk about it is just like well i didn't really want to but he wanted to and i didn't really and he didn't really want to but i and like again some of that can be healthy and beautiful but but for the purposes of talking about being alone or being single in a way that's not bad, you don't have to do any of that shit. hundred percent. And this, I, so my ex stayed with me a lot throughout the summer. This is no shade to him whatsoever. It's just how I like to be. I was like, for real, I get up in the morning and I see you. I come to the studio. I'm with Ashley and Bella and people all day long. The And then... The only time I get to be alone is the eight minute walk back to my apartment before I have to see you again. That's no shade to him. In New York, he was just there. Apartments. He just he was there working, and I was just like, I just never get to be alone again. Raina came over here. I saw her in the lobby. She had her lap. (laughs) She had her laptop with her. I was like, What are you doing? Like, cause you know, I was like, What are you doing? Like, I was coming from the studio. She was coming in. She's like, I gotta go up to the studio and take a shit and watch a Real Housewife on my laptop. I I, like ordered an episode of Real Housewives (laughs) for KFC. I was like, Go off. You know. We don't, we don't, again, it's just like shifting that from seeing like, because if we tell, if we tell all women, this is sad, you shouldn't want it. Or then so many women have forced themselves into this relationship where they have no space for themselves. And then they feel guilty for needing Mm -hmm. that space. Like it's just created such a toxic environment. And then you hear from so many people, like I've heard from so many people who are like, I got married and I felt like more alone than ever. And I didn't have my own space. And I'm just like, like, that's literally what I want. To, to do and what I want to do is like and am doing is like having these conversations so we can realize like these things we've been told they're not that simple they don't work for everybody and the fact is like yeah you can feel alone in a marriage you can mm-hmm. feel rejected and like I mean that's a whole other thing it's just like this idea that like the main goal is to get married but like have you seen marriages? Nothing will make you feel more alone in this world than being with a partner who doesn't support you, emotionally listen to yeah. you. Like, it is a horrific struggle being with a person and you're like, this is it? This person that doesn't fulfill me at all? But the sad thing is, and and that, like, society still thinks those people won because they're married. Like, that's mm. literally all they had to do. And... To that, I want to say, and, you know, again, I mean, I feel like everybody knows this. Maybe we don't have to keep saying this, but it's just like, it's not to say that marriage can't be good. And like, of course it can. But just this idea that like married people are good. They did everything right. Single people have failed. They've done everything wrong. That's what we're trying to like piece apart because the idea that like you've done a better job at living. You've like one life simply because you married somebody, anybody versus like actually waiting for somebody who you have something really magical with is bizarre yeah and that's again like just mindset shifting too. like I don't subscribe to any of that I have won at life this is my dream life like I just can't I I pinch myself every day like so when people allude to that I kind of just eye roll because I don't subscribe to it and it's not true but this is the least hot take of the whole show that half of marriages end in divorce so 
so many of these people will break up, you know, like as I don't want to sound cynical, but half of marriages less than half are really forever. So these people are going to be back out there wondering why they married the wrong person. A lot of them. But you know? again, it's like, but it's so tough when people are, you know, our society is built up to be like, just get married. It's a success. And he, <laughs> just that you did it. I know. And we are barreling towards this goal. And it's like, but what do I do after I achieve the goal? Like you die. I, you <laughs> die inside. You're yeah. slowly, you die inside. You just hang it up. However you need to dead. die, just die. I have like this friend and she's, been with somebody for, that I don't care for and I'm like what is the goal here you just to find a husband and, and a father and it's like okay so like when you nail him down and he marries you like then what like you you're actually gonna be with this person right it's like well, now what but because we want all the other little things you know we want we want the engagement we want the ring we want the thing but then it just is nothing in that narrative that's what it is yeah. it's all about that and then it's just like 40 years of like what are we supposed to do now I mean we we talked again with with Chris this is on my mind because the episode came out today but he mentioned this couple that had been together for years and he knew that she she well maybe both of them were just wanted to like have the wedding and like they broke up two weeks after the marriage like I've seen that a lot I actually a, a close friend of mine we were at dinner and she was saying that she was about to go to this wedding and they were she was like they're not they don't want to get married like I know she doesn't want to marry him and I'm like this is insane like mm -hmm. you're just that's what I'm you saying you want to have this yeah. fancy wedding and you want to be the main character for the day <laughs> you know it's like, right it's for the day yeah you're like I just wanted to have it and then it, like it's just so much what Raina said then what I mean and listen that I can't stress it enough like Raina and I talk about all the time like my parents her brother my brother these beautiful marriages these beautiful relationships like it can happen but that our, our job here is not to tell you guys that it can happen you know that you know it's right exactly like we we all know the good versions of this exist yeah, but yeah. it's just saying that like saying that this is patently the way to win is no. right you finding the relationship is not game over i love being in a relationship i think it's really fun i love having like an adventure buddy and a fuck buddy at all times it's great but my life didn't stop when i found a partner i still had to work i still had to work on my friendships and my relationships outside and of you that you still have to work on yourself right. it's just a different type of work you're doing and now you're like in a group project <laughs> with someone you're <laughs> fucking and you're carrying all the weight yeah a lot of the time <laughs> you know exactly well, or you're doing so everything so funny to think of a relationship as a group project and you're doing all the work. It is. <laughs> I've been there. You're just you're the one that you're like, it's just easier if I do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. That's every woman in every relationship. So am I. And that's every woman in every relationship with a man for sure. Where you're just like, oh, forget it. All right, I'll go to therapy for both of us. <laughs> you're not doing the homework. You Everyone's didn't do the forget it. I'm not gonna let my grade slide because of you, Brian. I will not. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's trying to schedule a time to go to the library together and you're like, listen guys, I'll just do the project myself. Yeah, yeah you're like, I already did it. I already have the notes. Just photo Copy them. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. Raina, I think you asked a question a while back <laughs> like 20, 20 and we derailed you. No, no, you didn't. This, this has been amazing. Came, uh, dogs came up. This and has then... been amazing. And I, this is all really useful. I just, outside of having a romantic oh, partner, friends, yeah, like was. I just want to touch on, I think we've been missing, you know, making friends. And people, oh, yeah. I want to say that people message us so, so, so often saying, like, can you give me advice for making friends? So if you are somebody who's like in a new city, you are a little bit older and you've moved, you're not making friends in college or at work anymore it is like really tough and a lot of women I'm mostly women say like I don't know how to make friends as an adult and it's like a real thing a lot of people go through it um so I just you know I was curious what you talk about in the book and we'll give our own advice I think Ashley and I have great robust social lives and it makes us feel so not alone when we don't have romantic yeah. partners yeah, absolutely. Um, so I'm um, writing, you will find your people now. So I'm like in the process of writing it. But what I, I view it as very much as a sequel to how to be alone, because I view I view relationships and friendships as I do. I, I've noticed for myself it there. There's like a building block. So how to be alone is essentially like, OK, how do you like become OK with yourself? How do you like deal with your own shit? So you're not bringing it into your other relationships and like creating all these like horrible, weird, fraught dynamics, which so many of us do. I've done it a million times. Um, and then once you've like done that work on yourself and not in that way that like I, I know you mentioned because we do kind of tend to tell women where it's just like go into a monastery, spend 15 years in therapy, then maybe you're ready to be loved. Like pray love. Yeah, right. Like do your, do I don't you. mean it like you've done all the work and now you're ready for love. But I think there's so much that can be helpful about looking at your own patterns, your own history and doing your own healing and then being able to take a different look at friendships. So in you will find your people. What I want to do is like examine all these different types of friendship, because very similarly to what 
we were talking about in this whole episode is like, we have this idea of friendship and it's really shallow. It's really just like, oh yeah, we're friends, but like we never talk about anything real and we don't ever really feel that scene and we don't ever really connect. And of course there's exceptions to that, but I just see specifically for women, but really for everybody, like there's just this really murky idea of friendship and we don't talk about friend breakups the way that we should. And I want to talk about it and we don't talk about maybe this friendship isn't working anymore and I want to talk about it. So I really just want to talk about essentially like dismantling all of these flawed ideas that we have about friendship and trying to get the friendships we actually want instead of the friendships that we're kind of told that we should have, but we feel like there's something kind of missing. So in a, in a simplified actionable way, it's so hard. Like it's, it's hard for me to specifically say that because the way that I've made my friends I have such like unique, bizarre stories for all of them. It's not like I can't just say like they all happened this way. You know, for me, I think one of the things that served me so much and that I talk about a lot is that I think I'm a very open person. Like I'm very, I'm a very anxious person, but I'm also a very open person in that I'm open to the idea that like, oh, if I go to this thing tonight, maybe I'll meet somebody who's really cool. Or, you know, if you live in a city and you're taking like public transportation and like you end up talking to somebody on the train and they're really cool. And like, I don't know, maybe you do go hang out with them. Like just having that openness Mm -hmm. has really served me uh, in terms of how I've made friends. Honestly, I think most of my friendships that are really beautiful come back to that, that I was just really open. I think with women too, I mean, you, you know, of course there's these narratives of women being like catty and snobby and exclusive and, you you know, not letting you into the group. But I think a lot of women, especially if you see another woman who's alone is probably going to be open. Like I remember that time I sat down with that girl at, at Soho house and like we connected and now <laughs> actually you had know, a best friend it's so much easier. I know Raina came up. I was like, this is my new friend. I met her 10 minutes ago. Like it was just like a big booth and she was alone. And I was like, do you mind if I sit and it's also then easier to connect social media wise. Like you're like, it's not, it's less of like, let me get your phone number. You're like, let me follow mm-hmm. your Instagram. And then you connect right. that way. But um, like I've made friends in the DMS and things like that, but think that someone else might want to be your friend too. You know, like that's the getting out of your head of like, Oh, that woman's never going to want to talk to me. Like she's probably got a whole big group of friends. And wh- why do we think that someone wouldn't be on the same page that we are? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's not easy and it is work. And I, I think a lot of the advice is like, find a hobby and go do it. And listen, you're not always right. going to meet somebody at a workout class. You, not everybody has the time to go find a hobby. I don't want to. I really love yeah, my soul. Yeah, a lot of people like, don't want to. But it yeah. is, if you say to yourself, I don't have friends and I want them, it is going to be work. And there are a million ways you can find friends. Like I would go on Time Out, whatever city it is, Time Out New York, where we are. There are so many different activities go to those activities, say yes. When my fiance left me, I was like, oh, I don't really have a social life for a lot of friends. And I had to work for it. And I started saying yes to literally everything anyone asked me to do. But there's meetup groups, go on meetup and see what there is, what there is going on. There's for women, there's so many women's professional networks that you can like go to events that like are around your job. And all women are there alone or with one other friend. It's the perfect way to meet another friend. But it's not so easy, but it's worth it if you do it. Well, if I find myself ever talking to a a woman or even hearing their story then they're like I just don't have any friends and I dig a little deeper and I'm like you've always had a boyfriend you know so that's why you just prioritized even from grade school you know boyfriend after boyfriend after boyfriend if you don't have a boyfriend a partner you're alone so for me I just realized at a very young age like friends are going to be the thing for me it was my priority and I think you see a lot of people who prioritize the partner and they would rather be with anybody than not with somebody like that's the fate worse than death thing so one day you wake up and you're like for whatever reason I don't have the boyfriend anymore and I don't have any girlfriends either yeah and we always tell people like boyfriends partners you know I'm just being very hetero right now but come and go but your your good friendships are so important yeah it's what sustains me what it's what makes me feel like I can be in a relationship or not how many people stay in relationships because they they're like they don't have anybody else that that too yeah that's a really scary place to be for a lot of people just like oh if this person leaves me like when my fiance left me I was like I mean I had friends but I didn't have like a wealth of friends and things to do and I was like what the fuck am I gonna do now I went to culinary school because I was like what am I gonna do on the weekends I have nothing to do Mm -hmm. you know so I'm not saying it's easy I just want to like give credit to people that say like I'm having a hard time finding friends it is not easy it is work but like you gotta go do it just go do it just get out of the house and go do a thing and go do it and being open to like you know because for me the 
I feel like it'd be too much pressure to be like, okay, I'm going to go to this event and like make a friend. But you know, even just in those small interactions that I have with people where I'm like, oh, this is like kind of nice. And sometimes I've, you know, it's so funny because very similarly, um, I met these girls at Soho house as well. And like just randomly by being, I overheard something they were talking about. Oh, that's what it was. Like this girl was a, one girl was a wedding photographer. The other girl was a wedding planner. And I was like, oh my God, I do a show about how bad dating apps are. I feel like we should all be friends. And they were yeah. like, yes. And I was I like, we're, we're yes. like a group of, we're still friends. And one of those girls took my author photo for my book. So it was just like wow. later, like a year later. So it was just like, you never know. Like sometimes just like overhearing somebody talk about something and you're like, I think there's an in here or like you happen to bond over something silly. Like I think that's the beautiful thing and the, the opposite side of what we're told about women. Like we're told that women are like catty and aloof, but my experience has been that actually no, like, I, I mean, so I, I, I know agree. women, yeah. I know women can, can be like that. Of course they can. But I just, I just see things like that where, I mean, think about, you know, the bar bathroom at 2am, like women want to connect with you. Yes. Other. They just do. So. And anybody that shames you for saying hello at a place like Soho House, fuck that Well, uh, guys, listen, we can't stress enough. There are some real assholes at Soho House. Yeah. And a lot of like, <laughs> don't just go up to any old, no. <laughs> but, but I just, I feel like if you do something like that, you say, Hey, can I sit down? Oh my God. I overheard you yada yada whatever you're in is yeah. you know sometimes that's going to take a lot of like gassing yourself up to get there if they brush you off then they're just an asshole and forget it also maybe they're just busy also I was maybe they say, still, yeah maybe so, they just didn't want to like every yeah. and again I've had somebody come up and like talk to me when I'm doing something and I'm just like really tired I, I've had girls try to, to be my friend and I'm not interested and it's a little awkward and they keep messaging me like hey girl let's get drinks and I'm like ah I don't want to um, Ashley, <laughs> makes, Ashley makes people work for it but I, I, do. I but, met her and I was like I want to be your friend so bad but <laughs> you'll feel an openness or not and right, right if why not try because the time that it works it's like that could be your friend for life. She could take your author photo. Yeah, you know. right. And if, they, a if they don't person, reciprocate, like, it doesn't define you at all. It's just like walking up to men at bars too and saying like, or say, anybody yeah. or women at bars, you know, if somebody's yeah. not into it, that doesn't define you. That person wasn't into it in that moment for whatever reason, your day is going to go on. Your it's fine. They weren't your person, but it's, 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 I think it's still better to ask. I think it's still better to try because if nothing else, you're like building up that muscle. You're like, oh, this is not that big of a deal. This was really great <laughs> yeah. and wonderful. And Lane, you didn't really talk about it a lot, but you have this great show Tinder live. And I know that yeah. you're on tour and you're going to a million cities. So p just tell people where they can find you. Your yeah. website, your Instagram is really great. By the yeah. way, your oh, videos, you. you talk about attachment theory and all kinds of stuff. It's just, I, I love it. Um, so um, tell people where they can find you and your shows. Yeah. So I'm at hello lane more on every social media thing. Uh, my website is lanemore.org sure. and that has like all of the tour dates and all the all the good stuff. Amazing. Okay. Yeah, and, your, and then oh, the yeah. books. Yeah, How to Be Alone, you can get any bookstore, obviously. And I also read the audiobook too, so that's cool. And then... Um, oh, awesome. Yeah, which is neat. And my dog sat on my lap the entire time I oh, like read the audiobook and was just very quiet. Um, and then my second book, You Will Find Your People, will be out in spring 2023. So in like a year. Oh my gosh. Very so exciting. And you guys know where to find us, girlsgottoeatpodcast.com. Hit that for show tickets, merchandise on sale now. Uh, you can follow us on Instagram at Girls Gotta Eat Podcast. I am Ash Hess on Instagram and TikTok. Raina is Raina.Greenberg on Instagram. Girls underscore Gotta Eat on Twitter and YouTube.com slash Girls Gotta Eat. And we'll see you next week. Have a good week, guys. Bye. Bye.